Blitz 8 with Travis Lee. All right, welcome to Blitz 8. And after a rough start to the season with two losses, Bonnie Eagle taking a three game win streak into perhaps his biggest, biggest challenge of the year, taking on Wyndham. Bonnie Eagle coming out fired up, but it would be Wyndham that would get on the board first. Griffin Jacobson punches it in, 7 0. Wyndham early, rather 6 0. Bonnie Eagle would take a 7 6 lead, and their defense would force a punt. Cam Burge is a weapon. Return middle, and then he's busted at the outside. The special teams making special plays for the Scots. 13 to 6, Bonnie Eagle. After Wyndham ties the game at 13, Cam Day up top to Evan Cram, and Evan Cram cannot be taken down with one man, or maybe even two men. Bring a cage next time. Cram gets his way into the end zone. That is desire. 20 to 13, Bonnie Eagle. Final quarter. Scott's trying to put it away. It's day up the middle to some daylight. Whoa, look out. Camp hops this with the butt kiss style clothesline there. But in the end, it's Bonnie Eagle with the statement win 33 13. The Scots have won four straight. Scarborough hosting South Portland. Jack Hughes having a day. Finds Wyatt Tanner in the corner of the end zone. The nice grab. And the Red Storm up 33 to 7, coming off that loss last week to Thornton. Then the ground attack. Owen Gerard, the sophomore, for six. 40 to 7, Scarborough with a win tonight at home. Deering visiting Oxford Hills. Rams up 14 7 in the first. They gave up a long TD run in the first, and then the defense tightens up. Don Bernard in the backfield for the tackle. Rams get the ball back, and Nate Richards in scoring position when he steps off the bus. Showing that breakaway speed. See ya. He is gone for the touchdown. Deering extends the lead to two touchdowns 20 to 7. Later, Oxford Hills going to the air, but Joe Burke with a nice play. Look at that tight coverage. That helps out the offense as Pat Viola would help his team get into the end zone. 34 to 7, Deering. The Rams, after struggling for a couple of years, they're looking good. 4 and 2 on the season. Edward Little hosting Sanford. Sanford, oh, they're doing it on the ground this year under Coach Fallon. Peter Haggerty, the touchdown run, cutting back, finding a hole. 35 13, Sanford in the third. Sanford's D line, a brick wall. Michael Money and Harris Lane converge for the tackle, going nowhere against those guys. Edward Little's Matt Verrill, though, takes matters into his own hands. Look at the elusiveness. I'm going to go over the top. Finds his man, Tyler Blanchard. And he is gone after the great move. Touchdown. EL down 35 19. Down two scores with eight and a half to play in this one. But Sanford decides to hammer away on the ground. Sam Anderson for six. 41 25 for Sanford the win. They take on Bonnie Eagle next Friday. Chevris, the long trip north to take on Bangor. Dane Johnson, the touchdown run for the Rams. Bangor down 14 to 6. This would be a signature win for them if they could come back. But Chevris, the defense steps up. Max Coffin, the pick. And he's thinking six the other way and almost makes it. Either way, that's going to set up his offense in good territory. Ryland Benedict scores from there. 34 to 14. Chevris, the Stags hosting Scarborough next Saturday. A South leader Thornton Academy at Massabesic. The Mustangs defense trying to slow down that mighty Golden Trojan offense. Austin McCrum back to pass, picked off by number 23. His name is not on the roster, but be proud, number 23. You made a great play. TA would get the ball back in a scoreless game, and Greg Roth, well, not scoreless anymore. 7 0 Thornton. Later, McCrum hooking up with one of his favorite targets, Corey Hart over the middle. Hart with lots of yak on that one. 55 7 Thornton Academy. They're at South Portland next weekend. Now in Class C South, both Yarmouth and Cape Elizabeth appearing to be on a collision course. They meet next week. Both entering tonight unbeaten. Yarmouth would win to go to 6-0. It they beat Spruce Mountain. Could Cape get past Gray New Gloucester? Well, some wondering if Gray could hang with the big boys. And the answer tonight, yes. Scoreless game in the second quarter. Justin Bowie to Zach Haskell, who is slippery. Check that out. Then Bowie up top to Haskell again, deep into Cape territory. But the Capers stop the Patriots on fourth and goal. And then the Patriots stopped again on fourth and goal by that Cape front seven. In the third quarter, another fourth and goal for Gray, and it's no good again. The Cape defense get him a game ball. Still scoreless. Gray driving, but Ben Ekdahl. Oh, this time of year, if it's ripe, it's going to get picked. And the pick six for Ekdahl, the only points in the game. Seven to nothing. Cape Elizabeth, Cape and Yarmouth next week. What a matchup, both at 6 0. Wells also in contention for one of the top spots in Southern Sea, hosting Lake Region. This is Matt Seasgill. You know, I probably mispronounced that. A lot of consonants in there. But you know, if you keep running like this, Matt, I'm going to have to learn how to pronounce your name. The 56 yard run for the 
for the uh, setting himself up, that is, for the touchdown. And then Jacob Spofford, another touchdown. It was all Wells. 59 to nothing over Lake Region. They have Gray next weekend. All right, a major showdown in Northern Beat tonight is unbeaten Brunswick. Took to the road to take on 4-1 and one Brewer. Brunswick are coming off that big win over Skowhegan last week. And Brewer, well, of course, lost to Skowhegan. It's a round robin in Northern Beat. Second half, tied at 14. Brewer quarterback Logan Rogerson keeps it himself. Good decision. He's gone 51 yards. Brewer, 22-14. to 14. Will Bessie and the Dragons running attack. Slowed down. Some gang tackling by the Brewer Witch Project tonight. Bessie, in fact, left the game in the third quarter with a leg injury. That's going to be a developing story going forward as he certainly has put himself in contention for the Fitzpatrick Trophy and helping his team go deep into the playoffs. Later, Rogerson with a little bit of luck off the defender's hands and Tyler Hathard's hands. Brewer knocks off Brunswick tonight. 34-27, the Dragons' first loss of the season. The Witches are fired up. Bitterford on the road at Mount Ararat. First quarter, ball gets batted in the air. Ryan Mello picks it off, and he's going the other way. 33 with a pick six. Six to nothing, Mount Ararat. Must have been something in the water today with all the pick sixes. Ensuing kickoff, though, Jeremy Lugiano picks it up around the 20, and you can put it on the board. Yes, he's gone. Seven to six, Bitterford with the lead. Next Tigers possession, Lucas Roy really has taken over on the ground from the Tigers, having a strong second half, 56 yards. See up, 14-16, Bitterford at that point. And then Joey Curran will keep it himself a little bit later. 41-14, Bitterford with the win. All right, York visiting Westford. Both of these teams in must-win situations, pretty much. York's defense makes a play. That's Ryan Daly. He reads the pass, and how many number 90s can run like that? 70 yards, pick six, York is on top, 7-0. But the Westbrook ground game was a story in this one. Zach Hutchins using his blockers and then showing some power at the end of the run. 60 yards for this big, big game. He had over 200 yards along with Mace today, both over 200 on the ground. And then it's the touchdown for Hutchins. The team goes up 8-7. to seven. York trying to get something going a little later, but Mikhail Gage in the backfield with a body slam. 40-14 to 14 Westbrook with the win. Unbeaten foul with hosting Morse. Closing seconds of the first half. Jack Bryant over the middle to George Gilbert. That moves Falmouth inside the five-yard line. Bryant had a huge game, 224 yards passing, four touchdowns. That sets up Jack Walker for the three, 31 to nothing. Falmouth. Yachtsman trying to get something going on defense as well. Or rather, that is Morris trying to get something going on defense. But Austin Wheeler with the pick. This is all Falmouth, 31 to nothing. They have Marshwood next week. All right, Noble visiting Gorham. The Knights give it to Casey Rogers and. Rogers doing what he wants to do. Some nice cutbacks and making some moves. And whew, see ya. He's going to go 84 yards. He can drag down at the two yard line. He'd later go in for the score. Noble with a 41 to nothing win over Gorham on this night. All right, in Hamden, it was the hungry Coney Lambs going to the Broncos. Reed Shostak had a big game up the middle, takes the pass, and going downfield. He had four rushing touchdowns. Coney with plenty of offense in the one. this one. 47-14, Coney with the win. And Skowhegan taking on Mesolonsky. Skowhegan getting another big game out of Garrett McSweeney. Skowhegan 33-21, topping Mesolonsky.